Well, welcome back to the fourth of our online assemblies in this lockdown time. I wonder how you're feeling about uh, some of you maybe going back to school after half term? Well, we'll see how that goes. But most importantly, we're thinking about how, uh, why the world is the way it is now, why God's world is the way it is now. I've seen some rather uh, interesting things, haven't we, so far? But before we go into those things, I thought we'd do something a bit different today. I thought we'd start with a question. Has someone ever blamed you for something that they did? Has someone ever blamed you for something they did? Maybe it was in the classroom and, and they, while well, the teacher was turned his back, they did something and then they pointed their finger at you when the teacher saw it. Maybe you were working with someone and, and it all went wrong and they blamed you for it. I don't know, maybe you've blamed someone uh, at home brother or sister for something you've done. I think all of us have done it sometimes haven't we? Rather than taking the blame ourselves we want someone else to get the punishment instead. Well has someone ever blamed you for something they did? We'll see in the Bible that that very much happened uh, and where it came from in the Bible as well. Before that though we're going to start by praying together. We're going to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us called the Lord's Prayer and the words are on the screen Right now, let's pray together as we begin our assembly. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to sing now. We're going to sing Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The words are on the screen and I hope you enjoy singing this as we begin our assembly together and we remember that God is with us wherever we are. However we're feeling, God is with us now. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One, as God, is here. still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Bow down before Him now in reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight shining all around. Be still for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith receive So in these assemblies we're thinking about what the Bible says are the reasons for the way the world is the way it is now. Now let's think about what we've learned so far. So we saw that God made the whole universe and he made the world good and perfect, like he is good and perfect. And he also made perfect relationships in the world, men and women in perfect relationship with each other and with God and perfect relationship with the, with the world under us as well. But that order, God, then humankind, and then the world. That was a good way that God made it. But last time, do you remember? We had the snake coming into the story. And the snake came 
and that was the devil in disguise, and told them a lie. He said, you can't trust God. He's given you one rule. He says, enjoy everything, but he's given you one rule, and he's trying to keep the best thing from you. So you should go, said the devil, go and take that special fruit from the middle, that tree in the middle of the garden, and eat it. And you know what? You'll be like God if you do it. He'll give you, he'll give you better things by disobeying God than by obeying him. And that led to a broken relationship. Broken relationship with God because they didn't trust him, but also broken relationships with each other and the world. We'll see that now as we look at the next part of the story. But it all came from that lie of the devils. Don't trust God. Disobey him and you'll get something better. A lie that we still feel in our hearts and sometimes in here as well, isn't it? So today we're going to think about what God does about our not trusting him and the evil things that we do. We'll hear about how the world God made is spoilt by our sin, that choice of going against God. And we'll also see, wonderfully, the hope that God gives that he will come and sort it out using his special saviour. So going back to that question, has someone ever blamed you for something they did? Well, as we read what happened next in our story, at the beginning of the Bible, our true story, we'll watch out for who blames who in this story. Okay. Let me read it for us. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took it and she ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Now being naked, uh, it was more about being embarrassed. Suddenly they didn't trust God anymore. Beforehand, when, when little children are, are babies, they run around with no clothes, they're fine because they trust everybody. But as soon as we, we start to think, oh, oh, maybe I need to cover up, so I can't maybe trust people to be un, to not to be kind to me, so that's when we realise we're naked. So the man and the woman heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Isn't that sad? There they were, they had been perfect friends with God, and now they're hiding from him. They're hiding from him. Their relationship's been broken. But the Lord God called to the man, where are you? And he answered, I heard you, God, in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? from which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said to the woman, watch out for the blaming, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Notice how the man is blaming the woman for giving them fruit, but also blaming God for making the woman in the first place. He's rather than taking responsibility that he did it, he said, no, no, it's your fault, God, it's your fault, woman. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? And the woman said, the snake deceived me and I ate. So the woman, she knows she's done something wrong, but rather than taking the blame herself, she said, it was a snake, blame the snake. So what happened as a result of that? Both the man and the woman had disobeyed God, hadn't they? Yes, the devil had tricked them into it, but still they had done it. Let's see what God does about it. First of all, he talks to the snake. So the Lord God said to the snake, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you'll eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity, that means anger, between you and, you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and he will strike his heel. You don't like snakes, do you? We're scared of snakes and they're scared of us as well. Sometimes, sometimes they attack us, sometimes we attack them. It's not a good relationship, but actually it's not just snakes, is it? It's the way the whole world is. Our relationship with a good, good world has been broken in all kinds of ways. To the woman, God said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. See, there's a, a damaged experience of, of family life there. To Adam, the man, he said, because you listened to your wife, and ate fruit from the tree, 
Not because he listened to her, because it's really good to listen to one another, but because he obeyed her rather than obeying God. Because you ate, because, said God, you ate fruit from the tree I commanded you not to. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil, you'll eat food from it all the days of your life. Notice that the ground was cursed, the world was damaged because of what we did. And also our experience of life, of working in the world, was damaged as well. Beforehand it was great fun looking after the world. It all went really well, but our relationship with, with God had been damaged, with each other had been damaged, and our relationship with the world as well. So many things have gone wrong. Because Adam and Eve didn't trust God, the God who created them and gave them so many good things, they disobeyed him. That's what sin is, disobeying God. And that spoiled their relationships. Uh, uh, they spoiled their relationships with him and the, and the world and God. They were afraid of God now. Uh, they blamed each other. Uh, they battled with the animals. They suffered in everyday life and work. Oh dear, it's so, so bad, isn't it, going against God? The results of it. The beauty of the world, which I can see right now, a lovely Sunday day, and all our relationships can still be seen, we can still see beauty in our relationships in the world, but also everything is broken by sin in one way or another. Think about it for a moment. Where do we see brokenness and beauty together? Well, even the best days, the days when we're having the most fun with family or friends and things, even they can go wrong. Even the best friends, they can sometimes fall out. Even nature goes wrong, doesn't it? Disasters happen. Diseases happen, like coronavirus. All these things happen because sin came into the world at disobedience of God, going out of his good way. But, even though it sounds so, so bad, all that's happened just now we've been looking at, in his mercy, despite our, what we've done against him, God has promised a serpent crusher. A serpent crusher. He wasn't just saying someone who's going to go against snakes. He was promising someone who would take on the devil and would win, would come and save us from all the bad things that have happened from sin, as well as from the devil himself. Someone who would make things right again, make things right between us and God, make things right between us and the world, and us and each other. That's a wonderful thing to look forward to, isn't it? And Christians look forward to that because of what Jesus has done. But we still live in a world where things do go wrong, don't we? And you know what? The next part of the Bible shows that things have got gone from even bad to worse in this sin-spoiled world. That's what we're looking at next time. Right now, though, let me go and get a box. Yes, it's time for our Ask Tudor questions. Our Ask Tudor questions. We haven't got quite so many this week as last. But let me show on the screen the ones we have got. Four questions for us to be dealing with today. The first question you asked was this. If God made the world good, why do people do bad things? If God made the world good, why do people do bad things? Well, let's remember what Adam and Eve did. God made the world, their world perfect, but because they believed the lie that there's something we're missing out on, they didn't trust God, and so they chose something else. So people do bad things because they think that those bad things will be better for them or because they can't control their own anger at their own emotions anymore, because sin's living in us. And sin's affecting me as well, it affects all of us, doesn't it? Sometimes we can't control our emotions. That's why people do bad things, even though God made the world good. Okay, second question. Why do people get jealous? Now, being jealous is when you want something that someone else has got, or you want to be in their shoes, you want to have what they've got. It's not just wanting a thing they've got, it's, it's wanting to have what they've got. Sometimes even to wish they didn't have it at all. And that happens because because we think, do you know what, I want to be in charge of the world. I want to be at the centre of it. I want it to all be about me. And if someone else has got better than me, I don't think that's fair. Now, the word, we don't use the word fair properly, do we? That word fair, we use mainly as, I don't like it, I want it different. So you get jealous because we want something someone else has, ha has and we think we should enjoy it more than they should. Okay, third question. How do humans damage the earth? How do humans damage the earth? Well, there's loads and loads of ways that humans damage the earth. Sometimes, again, we've 
done it by, by using too many fossil fuels, coal and gas and burning them, and that's caused the greenhouse effect. It's called, caused the glaciers to melt, the world's too hot because we've wanted the energy to get the things we wanted. Sometimes it's when we've put poisonous chemicals into the ground and they, they damage the ground, they damage the plants, they damage the animals. There's all kinds of different ways that humans damage the earth. Sometimes that's through littering, where it's through putting plastic into, uh, in, uh, around the countryside or plastic into the sea. There's all kinds of different ways that humans can damage the earth because it's quite precious, it's quite, quite sensitive. But we do it because we want what we want first. We don't think about other people. So that's how humans damage the earth. Maybe you, you can ask your parents about other ways. Fourthly then, a different kind of question this one. Why do people call God Father? Why do people call God Father? Now our Father is um, someone who loves us and looks after us and Christians think and know that God can be our perfect Father. Not just our Father when we're living in this world, like our human fathers, but our Father forever and ever and ever. He has brought us into his own family. We could be, we are children of God if we trust in Jesus. He says, I love you so much. I want you and my family, I want you to love you so much like a father does. So that's why Christians call God Father. Why in the prayer we said earlier, our Father in heaven. He's the one who looks out for us, who loves us so much, and who's helping us to be more and more like him. Like we like to uh, be like our parents if they're doing the right things. That's why Christians call God Father. Well, those are our Ask Tudor questions for today. Again, if you've got questions from this time or about anything else, please do let your head teacher know and they'll feed them back to me. And I'd love to have them uh, hear them included in our next uh, assembly after half term. Well, I hope you've had a lovely half term. I hope you do have a lovely half term. And uh, before we go to half term, we're going to spend a bit more time praying ourselves. Now, remember last time we saw there were three types of prayer. Thank you prayers, sorry prayers, and please prayers. And we're going to say one of each of these each time. So I'll come up on the screen and I'll say them. And you can say them with me as well if you want to. Or you can just say Amen afterwards if you want to, to agree with them. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for the beautiful weather you've given us. I'm sorry, God, for when I've been ungrateful to my parents and thought I know best. Please forgive me. Please help me to trust you, God, even when I don't understand. Amen. Well, in our last few weeks, we've had a, a thank you prayer and a sorry prayer. So today, I'm going to leave space for you to say a please prayer. You might start with, Father God, please, and then you can pray what you'd like to pray to God, and at the end say Amen. You can say it out loud, or just say it quietly in your head if you want to. I'll give you space to do that now. Well, God loves to hear our prayers. Wherever we are, whatever they're about, he loves to hear them, because he loves us more than anyone else in the whole world. That's why I uh, follow Jesus, and that's why I want to help, uh, help other people to know more about him too. Well, I hope you have a lovely half term, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Please do remember any questions or prayers or thoughts that you've got you'd like to include in our assemblies. Let your head teacher know, and they'll pass it on to me. Right now, I'll say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>